All right, today's patient is a 99, look like a Chevy Suburban. She's in for a skip. I'm gonna show you how to diagnose that today. Welcome to Alice the Car Doctor. Welcome back with another Diag video. I'm gonna walk you guys through how to diagnose skipping problems. Let me update you guys what's going on with this patient. The customer brought it in. They already replaced the plugs, um, the wires, the distributor cap, rotor button the common things that go wrong with this truck, they already replaced that. Um, so my job is to find out why is it still skipping. So I think they got this car from an auction or something. It's not their personal vehicle. And I'm gonna walk you guys through how to properly diagnose it when it's at this state after you done replaced it, all the common stuff. But I think you should do this test before you replace all that stuff so you won't waste any money. So let's jump right into it, grab your wrenches. I'm gonna show you the what tools we're gonna be using. This is an engine compression gauge. This is my ratchet and spark plug socket. And this is a spark plug, just a worn out, well, a working spark plug. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that later. And my scan tool is already in the vehicle, so we're gonna crank it up, walk over to it to see what cylinder is actually skipping. So follow me on over here. Come on, wake up, baby. All right. So you would need a good scanner to do this test, but I'm basically going to engine, data display, and misfire data. And it'll give me live readings of the misfires that's happening real time. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, got a bad misfire on five, nothing on six, and we got a misfire on seven, nothing on eight. Oh, let me see. I'm revving up the engine to bring up the RPMs because sometimes when you bring up the RPMs, it won't skip. And as you can see, it's not skipping. Got a small skip on one, but that lead, I've already kind of got a general idea what's wrong with this truck, but for video purposes, I'm gonna walk you through it. As you see, when I let off the gas, it starts back skipping again. So let me walk you guys through the next step. So now I'm gonna check for spark. Be very careful when you're doing this. Um, there is a spark plug to me. Uh, it's like a spark plug. Um, what is it called, Fernando? Uh, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's a special tube for this, but I'm cheap. So I'm gonna do it this way. Basically, I already know this is cylinder number five right here. And how you can find which cylinder location for your vehicle, you can easily type in your, your make and model of vehicle, your engine type, and put in cylinder location in Google. So I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna ground it. Just lay it up against any metal surface. Go ahead and start it up, Fernando, and I'm gonna observe the spark. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you're not touching the engine or touching nowhere near that area. Ready? Yep. As you can see, the spark is great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And that's still in the number five. I'm not gonna check the seven. I'm gonna focus on five. One, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. You can go ahead and shut it off. All right, the next step is to diagnose and see if it's getting, I know it's getting fuel because none of the other, everything else, the vehicle is running. So that's how I know it's getting fuel. Um, it, this has the spider injection system, so that could be an issue too, but I'm gonna, you know, do the process of an elimination and the next step is to do a compression check. And what we need to do for that is, we need to eliminate the spark by, I'm just gonna unplug the ignition coil. And I'm gonna go over here to the fuse box and disable the fuel. And how I know it's the fuel. Oh, let me see. It goes like that. It says fuel 
pump relay. So I'm taking that one out. Cause I don't want it getting fuel and I don't want it getting spark when I do this test. So I'm gonna take my spark plug socket. I'm gonna remove this one, number five. Come on, act right, there we go. Let's break it loose. You can just unscrew it by hand. And it helps to know what the engine, comp um, the cylinder compression is. You can just look it up on Google. Not compression ratio, but the cylinder compression. Now this one's supposed to be um, normal compression, supposed to be 199. I've already looked it up, 199 PSI. And the bare minimum is 170, Fernando? Oh, the um, minimum is one, 180. Minimum is 150. Okay. Minimum is 150. So, if it's below that, the engine is very tired and it has some internal, it has some internal issues, and you will have to break down the engine and basically rebuild it if it's below 150. So, now. When I'm doing this, I normally let it bounce three times. Focus on the compression gauge here. So you'll see it boom, boom, and boom. I normally let it do three times because after the third time, it, it should have built up by three. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. Go ahead and turn it over until I say stop. One, two, three, all right. So as you can see, we're right beneath 100. That lets me know there's something wrong with this engine. I'm gonna recommend a rebuild for this car or a new engine. Probably be best just to get a new engine, but that good people is how you properly diagnose skipping issues. Pretty much on any car, it don't necessarily have to be for this car. Now, as you can see, I, uh, as you can see that if you would have jumped right into the spider injection, you would have been wasting money because you put a spider injection on there, you would have still had issues. Now, this engine does have 300,000 miles, right at 300,000 miles on it. So I'm pretty sure it's pretty tired. Time to go nighty night for this engine. <laughs> but uh, to find out exactly what happened or what's wrong with it, I'll have to perform other tests. So I have to leave that up to the customer, but I'm gonna tell him in my professional opinion, Doc's orders, it'll be best just to replace this engine or get it rebuilt. All right, good people. That wraps this video up for today. And remember, you can perform this test on just about any combustion engine. Yeah, combustion engine. So thank you for your guys' support. I really appreciate that. My YouTube is growing. If you wanna stick around, subscribe, like, comment if you have any questions pertaining to this job. Alice the car doctor out.